nestled within the unforgettable region of Normandy in northern France, Giverny is one of the most popular day trips from Paris, thanks to its impressive claim to fame. Giverny is where Monet chose to spend his later years and is where he created the kind of garden which makes even the greenest of thumbs green with envy. In 1883, Monet acquired a previously abandoned farmhouse known locally as the Pressoir in a little known village close to Vernon. The painter was already familiar with Vernon and wanted to find a countryside home after being forced to leave his beloved Poissy. Unfortunately, there is no train station in Giovanni itself and the closest train station is in Vernon. If you want to have more information, then I'll leave a blog post below detailing how to get there as it's a bit complicated to mention in the span of a short video. We personally drove as this gave us a lot more flexibility in terms of timings. Of Giovanni, Monet is said to have said, I am in raptures. Giovanni is a splendid place for me. How I think about Giovanni with this beautiful weather and I am envious of you being there. You cannot have an idea. And once you're in Giovanni for yourself, you'll see exactly what the artist meant. After all, the little village is home to a few winding streets, the kind of traditional Normandy architecture that looks like it's straight out of a postcard and several little eateries. deeper dive straight into the magical world of Impressionism, you'll want to visit Giovanni's Impressionist Museum, which will allow you to learn more about the history and significance of this movement. There are ever-changing exhibits, as well as a permanent collection, including one of Monet's most intimate paintings, The Cradle, featuring his own son, Jean. As soon as you enter Monet's domain, the star of the show quickly becomes apparent. After all, the main thing to see in town is undoubtedly the gardens. As a garden lover, Monet personally took on the role of re-landscaping the gardens, which remain a tapestry of delightful flowers even today. As a fan of painting en plein air, i.e. outside, Monet wanted to create the perfect space that would inspire the Impressionist paintings that are so iconic and beloved around the world today. Open to the public from spring through to autumn, there is no best time to visit. Indeed, any and every time you go to the gardens, you'll be greeted with a different flower and colour to commemorate the season. Spring welcomes lovely lilacs and large as your head peonies. Meanwhile, geraniums and roses can be enjoyed in June, while dahlias bloom towards the end of summer. The autumn can also be a great time to visit and soak up the ambiance of the full colours. If you want to get a greater glimpse into how the artist's brain worked, then you need to look no further than entering the house, which is included in the price of your ticket. This also happens to be a great space to shelter from the rain if it happens to be raining during your visit. I can assure you that even in the summer, rain is never too far away, but of course, this is what makes the garden so green and so luscious. If that 
there's one spot in the gardens you should be sure to visit before leaving, it's the water lily pond, which inspired over 250 water lily paintings. These are known as an nymphaea in French. The most famous of these artworks can now be seen in the Orangery in Paris. In order to access them, you'll have to walk through a tunnel, but it's well worth the trek. Through his artistic touch, Monet skillfully redirected the path of the Epp stream to create a pond which looks like it has been plucked straight out of an impressionist painting. You'll have to go through a tunnel to reach the pond area, but once you emerge, you'll see just what inspired his famous artworks. <laughs> 